only going to get into the very basics here in, uh, in understanding systems. Just know that if you don't understand systems, we don't understand coaching. Systems underpin almost everything we do from our daily interactions with athletes and colleagues to understanding biomechanics to understanding how athletes get injured. Everything is a system. So if not already, we should really start thinking in systems. But what does this mean? Well, systems thinking, first and foremost, is a set of practices based on the belief that the component parts of a system are best understood in the context of relationships with each other and with other systems rather than in isolation. Systems thinking was a response to reductionist scientific methods that dominated scientists' inquiry through the Industrial Revolution right up through the early part of the 20th century. And by the way, just because someone espouses the value of systems thinking doesn't mean that they derive the value of reductionism. Much of what we know is because we have broken things down into its parts and tried to figure out how it works, i.e., you know, much of science has been rooted in reductionism. It's an essential part of how we know things. But systems thinking is different. If reductionism is breaking things apart, systems thinking is putting it back together again. Systems thinking helps us in understanding and managing complexity. But to understand systems thinking, we first have to define a system. This is Danella Meadows' definition, which is a, a slightly fancier way of saying what Ludwig von Bertalanffy said in, I think, 1954, 55, 56, somewhere around there. He wrote that in order for us to consider something a system, it must have three things. Number one, component parts, you know, those individual parts that make up a system. It must have internet interconnections and interdependence must exist between those parts. And number three, it must have a purpose or a function. The objectives of the organization as a whole have a higher priority than the objectives of any subsystem, which is really, really important for us to understand. A great example of a system is the human body. It's made up of a whole bunch of component parts, other systems, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the circulatory system, the endocrine system, the immune system, the lymphatic system, the digestive system, the nervous system, the reproductive system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, there are interconnections and interdependence between and among all of those parts. And the purpose of the entire system, i.e. the whole body, takes precedence over any single part within it and every, in any single system within it. The human body is also actually a really good example of systems within systems, which is the world we sort of live in in sport performance and coaching. As coaches, we need to know just enough about all of the component parts that, that are in the body to understand how they interact, how they come together to serve a certain purpose, i.e., in this case, some sort of sporting performance. Now, we don't necessarily have to be experts on each of those individual component parts, but you know, we sort of leave that up to the scientists, right? But it is more important that we understand the bigger picture, i.e., how everything works together. Now, the challenge in this is that each system exists within another system. So we always have to zoom in and zoom out at varying levels of the system and systems to determine at which point we are best suited to interact or to guide or to explicitly coach. For example, if I'm a team sport coach, I might serve the purpose of the system, for example, a better team performance by affecting the energy of the whole group. You know, maybe I keep the practice light and fun. And because of that, the interactions are better. And, or, you know, maybe one of the players within the group is being disruptive. I have to zoom in on that single component within the system before zooming back out again to see if it, there has been any sort of effect. Now, there are a few hard and fast rules here, but there are some simple heuristics that can help guide us and help guide what we do and where we intervene into the system. One is that it's just not possible to see the whole picture of complex systems, because partly because systems are more than just a bunch of things that are related to each other. They are what are called nested living systems that are 
continuously interacting within time and space. We have to learn to see things as complex systems of systems, meaning each system exists within another system. And any intervention within the system will have an effect on the entirety of the system. Remember what von Bertalanffy said about interdependence, right? Each part of the system depends on all other parts of the system for its total system health. System health. Now, this is a very deep rabbit hole to go down. It provides us with so many more questions and answers as they relate to our interaction with the athletes that we work with. Thank you.